Hey guys, Mr. Catlin here for your second round of homework help for practice problems on 1.2. So we're starting with uh, the second page, I guess, the front of the second page from your homework. And we're looking at this H-shaped polygon, all right? So this, this H-shaped polygon that we're looking at here, it, uh, it's a scaled copy of the first bigger H-shaped one that's right before it there. All right, so we got a scale copy that we're dealing with here. And what we know about scale copies is they look the same, but they've either been like shrunken to smaller size or blown up to a larger size. So the key thing here is as we look through this is we understand uh, some of the, the things we've talked about. We've talked about corresponding points. We've talked about corresponding sides, which are parts, sides, points. We could also talk about angles. But the first thing that it wants us to do is to show a pair of corresponding points. Now, it says you could use color pencils if you want, highlight, that's fine. I'm just going to uh, pick a couple of points and give them a letter name. So I'm going to call this point A. And over here on uh, the smaller H, I'm going to say that this point over here, and I'm going to call it letter X, uh, those correspond. And we're going to say that A, A, you know, corresponds with X. And then uh, let's pick another pair of points. Uh, let's go over here at bottom left. I'm going to call that B, and I'm going to call that Y, okay? And so B is in the same location as Y, therefore they correspond as points. So B corresponds with Y. All right, easy enough for my, my two pair of corresponding points. Now i got to need some corresponding sides. So I want to use some color for this one just so you can see it better. Okay, I'm going to I'm going to make another point. All right, just for this, I'm going to call this C, and I'm going to call this point right here Z, and I'm going to correspond some sides. So my red one that I'm going to highlight here corresponds with this red one right here because they're in the same location. And so what I'm going to write is that line segment AB. All right it corresponds with line segment x, y, because they're in the same location. And then I'll do that one more time with a, c, which is on top, and x, z, because they're in the same location. They correspond with one another. They are corresponding parts, x and z. All right? You don't have to use a highlighter or a color pencil. You could label things like this after you make dots. All right? So we just want to make sure that you understand what corresponding parts are. That's how I did it. All right, so it wants to know what's the scale factor from the bigger one to the smaller copy. All right, we talked about scale factor on Wednesday of this week. And scale factor is the number that you multiply all of the sides by in the figure to make it equal all of the sides in the smaller version. So, for example, uh, let's look at AC. It is one, two, three, four boxes long. Okay, and over here, it is only one box long. So we can use that pair of corresponding sides to help us answer this question. And the question we have to answer is, what in the world are they multiplying by this number to get over to this smaller version? And it has to be multiplication for it to be a scale factor. And since it's shrunk, it's going to be a number less than one. So we have to think to ourselves, and this goes back to our warm-up problems, and similar to the last problems on the previous homework, Whenever I have to multiply a number by something and get a weird answer like this, and it's not a whole number, what can I do with the two numbers that are on the outside of this problem? Well, we learned that we could just divide them. One divided by four. We can set it up like this, and we have our answer. If you take four and you multiply by a quarter, then you will get one. So this is a quarter of the size of the one that's over here. So our answer for that one is one quarter. It says explain or show your reasoning. I think if you do this arrow and this little shown work right here, then you're fine in the regards of being able to, to show your reasoning through that process. Okay, so show that work. You'll be fine in that case. Okay, let's move on to problem number two. Figure B is a scaled copy of figure A. Select all of the statements that must be true. Okay, so... Does figure B have to be larger than figure A? 
it doesn't have to be larger. It could be smaller. Scale copies are not designated as always being bigger or smaller. It's just different. It has to look the same, but it could be different sizes. It doesn't have to be. So that is not true. We do not want to select A. Uh, figure B has the same number of edges. Mark that out. Figure B has the same number of edges as figure A. Okay, let's draw a picture just to kind of get through this. If we have scale copies, that means it's the same shape, which means they're going to have the same number of edges or like this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So it has the same number of edges. So that is true. They're going to they're gonna have the same number of sides and edges uh, because they're the same shape. All right. Figure B has the same perimeter as figure A. All right. Perimeter is a word you should know about, but you might not remember. It's when you add up the length of all the sides. Okay. Uh, it could have the same perimeter if the scale copy is exactly the same, but it does not have to, uh, and, is, and most of the time it's not going to have the same perimeter. So we don't want to select that. It doesn't have uh, all this. That must be true. It does not have to have the same perimeter. So we're going to say that's not true. Figure B has the same number of angles as figure A. Okay? If you look over here to our example, it's the same shape, so it's going to have the same angles. So, yeah, definitely that's going to be true. And then figure B has angles with the same measure as figure A. If they are scaled copies, this is a big thing that we discussed, then all of the angles are equivalent. They are the same for both figures. So that's a big one. That's, that's something that's true. Every one of these angles in this rectangle that I drew are right angles, and that's not going to change just because the sides got longer. Scaled copies have the same angle sizes. So, boom, B, D. And e for that particular one. All right, let's move on uh, to the next one, the back side of that, problem three. It says that polygon B, which I'm assuming is the one, yeah, the one on the bottom here, B, and then uh, A are uh, scale copies of each other. All right, so that tells us a lot of information. If they're scale copies, that means that there's going to be a scale factor, and they're going to have the same shape, just slightly different sizes possibly, and that's what the first question is asking. What is the scale factor from A to B? Well, to find scale factor, you really need a pair of corresponding sides so you can find out what they multiplied to get there. So 1.5, we don't know its corresponding side. 2.5, we don't know its corresponding side. But this 2.5, we do know. It corresponds with this one. Okay, so they did something from here to get down there. They took 2.5. They multiplied it by something, and they got 5. Now, for a lot of you, that's mental math, all right? For those of you that struggle with that, you could always do like we've been doing and just set 5 over 2.5. Uh, you could type that in your calculator, whatever you need to do to get that answer, okay? 5 divided by 2.5, that is simply just 2. So that means that they multiplied every side length of this top figure by 2 to get the ones on the bottom. So we know that uh, the scale factor scale factor equals 2 and you could say that uh, B is twice as large as A because it is. It's, it's twice the size of it. We know that from the corresponding parts here. So it wants us to find all the missing question marks in this polygon. So that means that this gets multiplied by 2 to get its corresponding side. This gets multiplied by 2 to get its corresponding side. So this question mark down here, uh, if we double 1.5, we get 3. So that's how long it is. If we double 2.5, we already saw that this turns out to equal 5 because it's the same length as the top side. Okay. Now there's some question marks on the top one, and I have a lot of students miss this because they think just because we multiplied by 2 uh, to change these side lengths, we have to multiply by 2 uh, or divide by 2 to go back. But remember, these are question marks about angle sizes. And what we talked about on the last problem is that in scale copies, all of the angle sizes are actually the same. So this angle right here, it's 82 degrees. It didn't change. Just because it got bigger didn't change the angle length or uh, size. And this one right here is the same as the one below. They're both 
uh, 53 and 82 degrees. They did not change in the scale copies. And then it says determine the measure of each angle marked with the question mark. That's what we did there. Okay, so we had 53 and 82 for those. And for these, we had the lengths for 3 and 5. There we go. And then last problem for this homework page. Uh, it wants us to complete these, um, these blanks, okay? So 8 times what is 40? I think that's pretty simple. We know that times fact. And then 8 plus what is 40? Okay, that might be a little harder for you to do. Since you divide these two to find the number in the middle, uh, it's the opposite of multiplying. What would you do with 40 and 8 to find the opposite of addition? You would do subtraction. So you would do 40 minus 8. And that gives you your answer, which is 32 that you'd put here. Okay. Uh, 21 divided by something is 7. So if I wanted to know what to do 21 divided by to get 7, then what would I do with 7 and 21? Well, I would do the opposite of dividing, which is multiplication. I would multiply those two numbers. If I take... Oh, I'm sorry, but that's wrong there. Uh, what uh, I would divide, I would uh, divide, divide the other direction. Instead of doing 21 to 7 divided by 21, I would do 21 divided by 7, which is 3. You know, 3 will go into 21 7 times. Sorry, I got that backwards. Um, 21 minus something equals 7. Uh, if I want to know what the number is going to be there to get 7, then I need to do something with these two numbers here. I need them to either add them together or subtract them. So, uh, in this particular case, I need a number that has a difference of 21 and 7 that I can put here and have their difference. So I need to find how far apart these are, which is 14, which I think most of you guys can figure out. And then back to number 5 where uh, they're multiplying, so we're going to do the opposite, which is divide. And we're not going to be having an answer of 3 here because 21 times 3 is way too big. So we actually want to take uh, 7 and just write it over 21 like we were doing earlier. And that would reduce to a third. And that's our answer for that one. This is a, you know, a good practice. It's just a little bit of algebra practice. A lot of it's times facts and basic math. But that last one, um, and even number three, can get a little difficult and complicated to think about. So uh, check your answers on here. Listen if you need some help. But uh, definitely completing those equations, things we're going to be doing this year.